At the T-minus three-minute mark, tape recorders on board the spacecraft were turned on. These recorders record both voice and data. This is WOMMLP operating out of Burlington, Vermont on 105.9 The Radiator. This is The Rocket Shop brought to you this evening by Advance Music Centre. Uh, so this program is supported in part by Advance Music, a full line, a full line music store offering instruments and gear, band and orchestra rentals, electronic and string instruments repair services. You're local, we're local, Advance. It's been all about music for more than 30 years. Located on 75 Maple Street in Burlington and online, at advancemusicvt.com. Good evening. Uh, it's your host, Tom Proctor. I've been on hiatus for a few uh, few weeks. I'm glad to be back. With me this evening is Jason Baker and Guy Henderson of Axiomatic. Am I saying that right, guys? Yes, That's you are. Excellent. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, how's, it, how's it going this evening? Good. Not bad, thanks. Doing great. Thank you yeah, very we much. We finally got to the radiator. Yes, we're here. We're um, here. It's nice to meet you, Tom. Yeah, we're nice excited to, meet, to be here. Nice to meet you guys as well. Have you uh, have been planning to come on the radiator for a while now? Is this the first time you've been here? It is the first time we've been here. Uh, we uh, initially scheduled uh, a couple weeks ago, but it was uh, uh, fortunately it was right before Thanksgiving, and everybody seemed to have forgotten that, including <laughs> us. So we uh, we're glad to be here after Thanksgiving and see that everybody survived Thanksgiving. Just about. And I'm personally glad that you got rescheduled because I wouldn't have been here two weeks ago. So oh, well, it's delightful in this case, I get to, I get to hear you guys play. Um, let's kick it off with a song just so everyone gets to hear uh, how you guys sound. Um, what have okay. you got to start us off with? Uh, we're going to start with this uh, song called The Co-op Cafe. All right. And this one has a bit of a story behind it. Let's tell that. Um, which I guess we'll get to in due time. <laughs> So right. here, uh, yeah, this is a song that I wrote uh, uh, myself a few years back as a result of a uh, trip to Florida uh, in the middle of uh, March. So it was it was a nice trip. That's axiomatic with uh, Carp Cafe. One. friend and a long lost jingle I guess it's time to go acoustic again the next thing I know there's a note on my door I got a package from way back when he said you got to take you a little vacation you should be getting while the getting's good now here's a little something to get you going going away from your neighbor So I guess I need a couple of dozen tunes From a songbook I no longer have I guess I could take a few rock and roll pieces Put them together in the shape of a laugh Well, it's the first real winter we've had in a while And I'm looking for solar power So I hit that old puppy trail about 600 miles an hour Come on over to the co-op cafe Well, we're all ears all the time What else can you say? Seen 
my share of attention. I have played the trampoline. None of that could have ever prepared me. The folks at the co-op cafe scene, they got more guitars can be counted. They love to sing that jug band song. I could have played on into the morning. Could have stayed up all night long. Come on over to the co-op cafe All ears, all the time What else can you come on over to the co-op cafe All ears, all the time What else can you what else can you say? Very nice. Very, uh, shades of uh, Lou Reed versus Randy Newman. Oh, uh, imagine. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, have you ever heard that comparison before? Uh, definitely the Lou Reed yeah. comparison, sure. Uh, yep, that would be a, kind of a vocal style I, I picked up. Uh, from him and also Dave Romberg has uh, more of the same kind of talking. Yeah, yeah I, I would say I initially had heard Randy Newman in the song a little bit in terms of the storytelling aspect of it. Yeah, that's what I was kind of getting at on that kind of that well, front. Well, this song, this is interesting. It has to do with the genesis of the band, actually. This song is kind of the first song we did together. Um, we learned together with the acoustic guitars. And one of the interesting right. things is that trip to Florida that Guy was speaking of was actually... Uh, it came with a free ticket, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. And yeah. this guitar. Yep. This mm -hmm. guitar was a free gift that arrived in the mail for him with a ticket to Florida to go see his friend. Yes. He wrote the song. Uh, he told him about this group of uh, a sort of a traveling uh, 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 song circle called the Co-op Cafe. And he wrote the song about it, played it for them. And they, it was a pretty big hit, I imagine, down there. But uh, oh, yeah. Guy and I had been working on electronic music by that point, I had been a, an electric guitarist in one of his bands, uh, and we had just been working on electronic music, uh, MIDI programming, that sort of thing, for a while. When he got this guitar, um, he sort of showed off yeah, some of his stuff. Yeah, that shifted gears pretty fast there. Well, I got kind of, I got a little jealous, so I complained to my wife, Guy's yeah. got a guitar now, and I'm just sitting there, and I can't play. Well, uh, she talked to a friend of hers at work where she worked, who was a guy who, who was quite a, a music aficionado and a collector of instruments. Uh, I'm going to give him a shout out. His name is John Bursey, but don't hit him up for this. <laughs> but uh, he was he's a, definitely one of our angels here. He, he gave me this guitar you see in my hands. Uh, after hearing that I just lacked an acoustic guitar, he just pulled one out of his collection and gifted it to me. Wow. And it's a beautiful guitar as well. It's a, it's, it was exactly what I was looking for. He asked specifically to, for my wife. My wife was asking some weird questions. If you could get a guitar, what kind of guitar would it be? And I told her, and it ended up being exactly what I needed, uh, an acoustic electric with a cutaway, with a certain type of wood, etc. So anyway, that was the genesis of us starting to play together at all as an acoustic. And it, compose together. And compose together. Well, initially, uh, that's the other part is, so about eight years ago, we, tried, we did a few of Guy's songs and uh, did a couple benefits as an acoustic duo. I just... Just a couple one-offs for the Boys and Girls Club, uh, for the local uh, Integrated Arts Academy and Magnet School, and uh, I guess I got a little again got a, you know jealous. Guys got a guitar. Well, guys got songs. So yeah, I, got, I guess I'm very sensitive that way. Keeping up with the Joneses, but within the within the band. Well, he's, yeah, you know, I, you know, we hang out and he's playing a song, and I'm thinking, you know, that looks like fun. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so basically, January, I, I tried writing a few songs over the course of the last couple of years. I wasn't doing so well, and then I decided to apply myself, look up, you know, from professional, get some professional help, as it were. And uh, so, about January of last of this year, I applied myself and began writing uh, songs. Pretty much, did a song a day for a while. As a drill. As a drill to get myself going. And uh, I, so at this point, I did, didn't keep up with that because <laughs> uh, that'll destroy your life. Yeah, every part of it. After what? How many days? Uh, I, did, I made it a month. but uh, yeah. That's quite impressive. 30 songs in 30 days. Yes. Or 31. I don't know which, which month. Of the Oh, January. So 31. Well, it actually, no, well, it took a while to get started there. But yeah, so it was a little overlap. Nonetheless, uh, it was about a month. And, and um, so I ended up, I've, I've got, you know, I've written probably 90 songs, but you know, in reality, about 30 of them are probably listenable, maybe a little more. Still uh, catching up with Bob Dylan on that one. 
I, I'm gonna work on it, working on it, working on it for sure. Um, and um, where did you get your inspiration for the songs? I've, I've noticed quite quite a lot of the songs I've been listening to are quite politically motivated, like politically charged. Uh, has yeah. has very contemporary issues. Is yeah. this where you get most of your inspiration from, or is it kind of just uh, you know new guitars, trips down to Florida, that kind of thing? Right. Uh, well. But, but the, the political stuff is mostly mine, uh, I guess. Uh, after uh, being a musician, you know, from very young, I tried writing songs when I was young, but they were terrible. Uh, just truly, you know, the, the type of abysmal stuff that any 19-year-old will come up with usually, you know, just trying to write a love song and you just don't know anything about it at all. So um, I gave up for a very long time. But I guess I had didn't, I thought, and then I guess I thought I had nothing to say for a long time. But trying to apply myself, suddenly certain things started popping out. And so, yeah, some of the some of the politically charged lyrics definitely were reactions to our current political climate. Um, I mean, I don't mince words usually in my songs. I, I do try and make it serve the song rather than just be a, you know, screaming a message or something like that. I was going to say, we all kind of have to scream into the void in our own particular way these days. And I suppose if you can do it with songwriting, then uh, it's probably a more pleasant way of doing it. Um, so, um, Guy, if if Jason's more of the political uh, yeah. folk singer, what, what kind of messages do you bring in your songwriting? Well, I'm, uh, I'm more or less the out-of-left-field kind of influence. Um, a lot of uh, lyrics, you know, are um, <clears throat> kind of, uh, you know, spacey, uh, not really a whole lot of uh, content there. Uh, they may just be, you know, like make vague references, you know, uh, I think the thing is uh, arbitrary personal illusions. And, uh, <laughs> and yep. so uh, that's usually... Uh, uh, the, uh, the the main thing is going on. I do take some inspiration from uh, current events, uh, usually just off the wall news stories that uh, that sort of demand a reply. <laughs> just to note, we have a number of songs that aren't in the recordings you've heard. We recorded only twenty of the of the songs that we have, and Guy and I both have a lot of material. Yes. Um, and uh, so we actually have twenty more songs that we're working on for a second collection already selected and i think the, the one thing we want we'd want to emphasize is that we're uh we're not writing in one genre at all and in fact that this isn't a uh, that the acoustic duo here is really a vehicle for uh, promoting our songwriting what we do is is we are a songwriting business to, to to some extent and and if people out there need songs contact us through our website axiomaticduo.com we will write you a song yep. um and we will figure out we'll work with you to figure out what it is you want and then we'll probably tell you what you need and or whatever else um we are happy to write so songs to order for folks uh okay. we are writing in a lot of genres and so although i have political lyrics uh, i also have a song on there on the recordings that's just a nostalgia piece for my hometown where i grew up ocean city new jersey it's called groovy c um i have another piece that's influenced by guys more artistic things um it's really sort of a theme song for the group called the axiomatic um, but it, it, a lot of these are exercises that did work out. In other words, the axiomatic was, what if you took a bunch of hackneyed catchphrases and tried and rearranged them to make them have some meaning and sense? Would it? And it half does and it half doesn't. And it's sort of one of those things that you have, the listener has to bring something to it as well. And um, have you been commissioned to do many songs yet? And what kind of songs have you done, if so? Well, no. Nope, no commissions yet. Uh, we're just, we're, we're just, this is, so we've yeah. been working on shed, woodshedding for this past year, writing our own material, uh, that we, you know, basically gaining the sort of, uh, gaining a breadth of, of material to, to show off or offer. And, uh, some of it is a, a appropriate for acoustic duo performance. So we decided let's, let's at least get the songs out there in some fashion. Um, and announce the fact that, hey, we've yeah, got other tunes too. We'll be like JJ Kale and somebody will, spot these collections and uh, start uh, laying them down one after the other. Yeah, we want people to cover our songs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the best advertisement, I suppose, is, is just playing. So do you guys got a second number that you want to... As a matter of fact... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of Jason's. Right, so in the, in the vein of songwriting, uh, uh, um, development of our songwriting abilities, one of the things, uh, this is one of the first ones that actually w came out pretty well, yeah. was a challenge. Uh, we decided to do, I do a lot of title challenges, throw a title or throw something down and just 
going to force yeah. myself to so finish. So I came it. up with the title "Wicked, Sick, and Sweet," which was a phrase. I don't know where you heard that, but whatever. I can't remember where that came from, but it, it was a Vermont thing. I'm pretty sure. Right. Like improv comedy, but for songwriting instead. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you throw, so you throw, so I, and I turned around, I was leaving, and I said, hey, any prompts? And he said, oh, whips out his little notebook, says, wicked, sick, and sweet. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, what genre? Yeah, I have no idea what to do with that but, phrase uh, myself. So he said, I, so I said, what genre? And off the cuff, he says, bluegrass. Mm -hmm. So I decided to, how do you connect, uh, the question was how to connect uh, a New Englandy kind of phrase to a a southern kind of music um and uh so i came up with this song it's uh it's about uh, uh about smuggling across the northern border i was gonna say bourbon by any chance. yeah there you go <laughs> you i say it didn't take long to figure it out that uh that uh so this is a, a and, and this song uh utilizes a lot of this the the uh traditional uh bluegrass tropes in it so anyway it's called wicked sick and sweet take it away <clears throat> one two three four it's wicked, sick, and sweet now, that's what old Jonah said. A run like this only comes when the moon is full and red. We gazed upon that treasure, just waiting at our feet, and sang that old smuggler song, Wicked, sick, and sweet. Wicked, sick, and sweet, red liquor and some meat, dry powder and strong coffee. It's wicked, sick, and sweet. It's wicked, sick, and sweet now, the love I have for you. No other wild flower is as strong as Mountain Dew. My heart jumps about a mile every time we meet, and then it bounces backwards singing, Wicked, sick, and sweet. Wicked, sick, and sweet, my gal is such a treat. With her banjo and her pistol, she's wicked, sick, and sweet. It's wicked, sick, and sweet now to sing a mountain reel. So blow away your morning dew, this is your last fair deal. Keep your skillet good and greasy, it's almost time to eat. With the Deep Creek Niner jukebox playing, wicked, sick, and sweet. Wicked, sick, and sweet, this whole town's packing heat. So make me a bed upon your floor and bring me them dry shells. For tonight we'll hold the fort down, in the morning leave this street. And sing that old smuggler song, Wicked, Sick, and Sweet. Wicked, Sick, and Sweet. Red liquor and some meat. Dry powder and strong coffee. So, Wicked, Sick, and Sweet. Very nice. Wicked, Sick, and Sweet there by uh, Axiomatic. Um, so, you say that you can do any genre uh, and improv, improv. Three random words. I'm not going to throw anything at you. Don't worry. Um, well, uh, yeah, we're not on John. Uh, yeah, he yeah. can. He can. You can give the words, and he can do it right on the spot. Yeah. Give me a few minutes, but uh, yeah, oh, give yeah. me 15, and I, we're more like Lennon and McCartney. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to stick in the spot like that. I, I'm wondering um, what. It, there's got to be a limit on the genres that you can cover. I mean, I'm assuming you can't do electronica uh, or, or death metal. Uh, but what are the, some of the more out there genres? Oh, well, you're yeah. shaking your head. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm the electronic uh, is uh, definitely within the realm. Well, that yeah. we understand. So uh, I, I started with Guy. I was a, a, just a guitar guy who like signed up for a rock band. He had a lot of uh, very literate uh, uh, rock originals. We'll just call them a lot. Of, you know, uh, yeah. that's the best way to describe it: eclectic and literate. Uh, but after getting frustrated with drummers and stuff like that, we started to do electronic music ourselves. And so actually, we were doing MIDI music. That was, uh, I mean, some of it did try and get into the jazz end, but it was, I, I guess you could call it as some of it as a jazz, some of it was just whatever it was. And so, um, it turns out Guy has a real, uh, a talent for programming beats, it turns out, that I was pretty shocked. He's really, yeah, really, really good at it. Easy on you nowadays. Well, it's a lucrative business, that one. 
Yeah, he doesn't really realize how good he is at it, actually. But so that's a thing. I don't want to don't let him don't take him away from me yet. Oh well. Um, but yeah, so he actually it turns out that guy guy has a natural talent for beats programming that uh, is even beyond. You know, I I took I mean I studied electronic music in college. Actually, I took two semesters of electronic music from a. a, a a professor there at Rutgers University yeah. and learned synthesis from literally the ground up. Yeah. So I know synth, Majority I know rock that stuff. was uh, collaboration entirely, wasn't it? It was all, yeah, every song was pretty much a collaboration, yeah. work, sitting there yeah. working together, which mm -hmm. was a, a different way from the way, way we work now. Um, songwriting now, we do not sit there and work together, at least haven't done so yet. But typically, a uh, guy will have a piece of music, need words, and I'll come up with words. He'll then edit it, and that'll be it. Or he'll need a verse or something, you know, there's some mixture. Thus, thus far, it's mostly been me contributing yeah, words I'll to his music. A part of a song uh, on one of your songs. Right. Something like that. That'll be about it. Um, but it's a slightly different collaborative process. Nonetheless, um, we have, we both have experience in all the genre. All, I mean, I've been, in, yeah. when I was a kid, I was in punk and metal bands. That's what I did. Um, so mm -hmm. I've heard plenty of yeah. experience with that type of music as well. I have a couple songs that I would say were more rock songs that I would hope I can get a rock band to cover um, eventually. But, uh, you know, I hadn't, sp that's the thing. I would love the challenge of writing for a speed metal band or any, or electronica band or some unique band that's a combination of any of those things. Right. Yeah. I'm sure we could handle that. I'd be very interested to, uh, to see that come up in your uh, second collection that you've, you've got <laughs> oh, coming wow. up. Yeah, it's um. It's throwing the gauntlet out now for you. Yeah, in fact, that's my three words: Depends gauntlet, on... challenge, and uh, uh, metal. Go, go for yeah. it. What was that? What was it? Gauntlet, challenge, and metal. Mm -hmm. Sp uh, I want to. I want to hear. I'm gonna write that down, and we'll be back. Metal, we'll get back with you. Metal tune by by uh, based right. on those phrases. Thank you. Well, I, yeah. I just say I got a very. I got that very. We got one coming up that's pretty fast, uh, but uh, yeah. uh, uh -huh. in the next uh, in the next collection. But maybe uh -huh. you'll like that one. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Um. So the, the, you had the collection that came out, um, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, October 26th? Uh, yeah, it was, it, we yeah. submitted it to... We, so nowadays, digital distribution is kind of weird. You don't have a record label. You just have an aggregator. So we submitted it on the 26th, but it fig eventually has been available since November 1st. So, okay. so, and it is available uh, at axiomaticduo.com. You can stream it. You can also stream it on Apple Music, Spotify, Google Play, it's on Amazon for sale, it's on iTunes for sale, mm -hmm. and that's where I would buy it if I was wanting to buy it. But feel free to stream it as much as you want. Just stream, stream, stream. We love that. And um, if you got, I mean, it's not a traditional album as you, uh, as you will. I mean, it's a full 20 songs for, for a start, so that's quite a hefty chunk of uh, material. Um, do you have many shows to go along with this release of material? We, uh, we, so we've played, uh, we just played Radio Bean, uh, a, a couple weeks ago. We'll be playing there again on December 18th. We'll be playing at the Radio right. Bean. We'll be playing at Begito's Cafe in Montpelier on December 16th. That's Saturday night at six o'clock. That's a full two hours. So actually we will be debuting a number of our, uh, of our other, uh, the newer other, stuff. Uh, yeah. other newer stuff that's going to be on the second collection will be played at Begito's. Uh, almost certainly, plus additional co plus covers, which is we're pretty light on covers, um, and we we tend to make sure that they fit into the uh, sort of traditional vein, uh, just because that's where people seem to have pigeonholed us. I'm sort of uncomfortable with pigeonholing, as you can probably tell, we're not happy with that. We're not real happy with that. But what we've done is uh, present these songs for uh, in arrangements for two acoustic guitars and two and male baritone vocals. So it comes out to most people as folk and uh, traditional folk and Americana sounding. That's that's reasonable. That's a reasonable thing to say. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the songs are pushing. We're trying to push the limits of genre uh, as far as we can truly um in terms of the actual songs and these songs can't many of these songs do where we would love it if somebody covered them with a full band arrangement we may do so ourselves in the near future um with a different group you know with a new with a new unit we're trying you know sort of we're auditioning folks and seeing about that but uh we're taking a broad approach is the best way to put it i like it it's uh singer songwriters for hire i'm glad that you guys are are out there putting, uh, not really having any any limitations on, um, on what you're deciding to put out there and, and keeping it keeping incredibly broad. Mm -hmm. uh, and I suppose, if anything, it just just kind of challenges uh, you two in terms of your own musical limitations, which uh, it sounds like you, you guys are trying to push it all the time. So that's basic idea. Yeah, I operate by. I uh, I think of uh, you know <clears throat> I had a 
realization a while back that um, uh, that's what uh, good musicians are often find themselves in a challenging situation, and so that's that's a good sign when that happens. Well, I'd love to hear one last song before you guys have to go. Um, what have you got sure. for me? Well, we got one. I just want to say yeah. something. I forgot one date. Uh, this Saturday, we're actually, so th uh, uh, this Saturday, the Ripton Community Coffee House is having their regular concert series, Daddy Long Legs, which is a Vermont super group of acoustic musicians, and they really are a super group, are playing. Before every Ripton Community Coffee House, they have a one hour open mic. You have to sign up, and we've signed up to play three songs there too, just like we have tonight. So if anybody happens to, uh, we're encouraging people to go see Daddy Long Legs and catch us with the other, with the other open mic acts at 7.30, and, um, that was pretty, I just wanted to make sure everybody, if anybody wants something to do Saturday night, this Saturday night, Ripton, yep. the hot, the hottest <laughs> town in Vermont. That's got to be my favorite place in Vermont, too. You, you heard it here first, Ripton, yeah. hot, hottest location in Vermont these days. All right, um, what's your last song? Let's hear it. Oh, okay, this one is called Ashley McClue, and uh, I had this music for a while, and it uh, sounded really traditional and kind of folky to me, so I... Uh, I looked around for a topic, and the easiest one is uh, uh, to uh, write a song about a, a folk character, you know, that people are familiar with, and but it hasn't been fully uh, written for. And so I came up with a song about Sheriff John Brown. Take it away. John Brown was born in Ireland His real name was Ashley McClue One day he up and went to Kingston Doing what a man's gotta do He wanted to be sheriff More than any other thing he was so bound and determined to run the town of the king. John Brown achieved his naming One dark and dismal day Kingston had a new sheriff Montego had a new bay He wanted to be sheriff More than any other thing he was so bound and determined to run the town of the king. One day Bob Marley had freedom No one could shoot him down He was tired of being hated That was the end of John Brown He wanted to be sheriff More than any other thing He was so
determined to run the town of the king. Ashley McLeod there by uh, Axiomatic. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Uh, just once again, I'm going to plug uh, your website, axiomaticduo.com. If you guys, if anyone out there needs a song in any genre covering any subject, <laughs> get these guys on it because, uh, well, we're the, game. They showed their chops this evening and uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, that once again, they're playing in. So Ripton on Saturday night at the open mic for the Ripton Community Coffee House in, in, in advance of Daddy Long Legs. We're playing at Baguito's Cafe on the 13th, uh, on the, sorry, 16th. on the 16th yep. of December uh, at 6 p.m. at Baguito's Cafe in Montpelier on Main Street. And we're playing at Radio Bean on Monday, December 18th at 7 p.m. All right, brilliant. Well, thank you guys so much for coming in. Uh, this is Tom Proctor. This has been the Rocket Shop. Catch me next week when we've got a live Rocket Shop from Arts Riot Blowtouch is playing. I'm very excited to see them. Um, once again, cheers. And uh, Thank you very much, Tom, for having us. You guys have a great night. Pleasure. <laughs>